Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to take a look at the Dead Air Wolfman. Well, let's check it out. Alright, so let's get into this review, alright? I've had this guy for, wow, well, almost dropped it. I've had it for a while. Um, I can't remember exactly how long, but it's probably about two and a half years or so, something like that. Um, so I've had it for a good little while. I've shot it on a bunch of different calibers, a bunch of different things. I'm not going to say I have tens of thousands of rounds through it, uh, but I have plenty of thousands of rounds through it. It is a fantastic can for what it is. So let's get into what it's for and really kind of just word vomit a whole bunch of stuff. Well, now we'll try not to word vomit, but we're trying to give you as much information as we can, all right? And information that I actually can give you, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that made any sense. First off, let's jump into some specs. Now, I don't, I'm not a big specs guy. I don't, doesn't really do it for me. I don't really care um, as long as it does what the suppressor needs to do, but some people really like it. So for the sake of those people, we're going to put the specs up on the screen and we're going to go ahead and just read it off for you as it is. And if you want more spec information, go to Dead Air's website. I think it's deadair.com. I don't know. Just if you look up Dead Air, you're going to find them. All right. So let's go, up, go ahead and look at the specs here. Caliber rating, we have 9mm, 5.56, 300 Blackout, 7.62 by 39, 350 Legend, 357 Magnum. All right, energy rating is 2,000 foot-pounds. The bore diameter is 9mm. All right, keep that in mind. The length, all right, and the long with no mount configuration is 7.5 inches. The length in short configuration with no mount is 5 inches, or 5.13 inches. The diameter is one 0.618. Keep that in mind, all right? If you're talking about putting this thing under a handguard, it needs to you need to make sure you have enough room right there. So it's 1.618 inches in diameter. The weight in the long configuration, no mount, is 14.4 ounces. The weight in the short configuration with no mount is 9.8 ounces. It's made out of uh, what is this? Uh, stainless steel, uh, 17.4 stainless steel. Um, so there's no, if you notice in there, there is no stellite, stuff like that. That's why this thing is not a rifle can per se. It's a pistol can. We'll get into that. Uh, the finish is Cerakote. The usage, um, extremely tough sub gun silencer. Note that. Uh, they even rate it for carbine use with the key micro adapter and mount. We'll talk about that. MSRP is right at $900. You can definitely get it cheaper than that. Uh, no barrel restrictions. And yes, it is full auto rated. All right. Sorry if I start sweating, it's just hot. Sorry, anyway, let's jump into this other stuff. Other stuff that I generally don't care about, but since this is a pretty modular can, it is a good thing to know what comes with the box so that if you wanna run it on another platform, setup, whatever you wanna call it, you know what you need to get. You know what, you know what comes with it and what you need to get. So what comes with it, this, this, this thing, right? Like I said, I've had it for, what, two and a half, three years, something like that, something like that. And, I don't remember taking exact pictures. I probably did. They're probably buried somewhere in iCloud or whatever. Um, but I've, best of my recollection, this is what comes with it. You get your suppressor, right? Which is in the full length configuration. You have the short length and this extra extendo piece, right? They kind of go together. That gives you your full configuration. It comes with, I think this is their older style. I think the new ones, it looks like, at least if you look it up on their website, it looks like the newer ones have a slightly different design, but it's the same thing. It's a half by 28 direct thread. Remember when it said on there, um, this is made for extremely tough sub gun silencers, or it is an extremely tough sub gun silencer. So sub guns don't need boosters. Sub guns don't need, don't need QD mounts, right? They don't need those things. They can use those things, but in general, a sub gun's gonna have a direct half a 28 thread. So that's what comes with it. That's something to note. All right. What else comes with it? You get a wipe. We'll talk about that in just a second. You get a end cap or front cap uh, tool. You get these other little tools, these little wrenches, very good things to have. Very good things to have, especially when you get to modulating this thing out, right? Putting it on different things, using different mounts. These are very, very, very handy to have. Very glad that they supplied with these with the suppressor. Um, and one thing to note, if you don't see these in your box, check underneath the foam in the box because these are usually like on the very, very bottom. They're buried away. You may not even know that they're there until you take all the foam out, right? So these come with it. I believe that's pretty much it. You get your sticker, uh, your decal thing. I never really use these, but you get your little decal. Your instructions, read your instructions. Don't be bad like me. Actually, read your instructions. They will give you a lot of information, uh, particularly like on this one when it talks about... Uh, where did it go? When it talks about putting the end cap in, uh, the wipe, when it talks about the wipe, it's got a whole big section there on putting in the wipe. Very good information to know. Read this stuff, figure it out. Um, 
before you go freaking out and trying to figure it out somewhere else. It probably says it in the instruction manual. You guys don't like to read instructions, like to figure it out, but you don't want to break your suppressor because you're figuring it out. Read the instructions. Other than that, I don't think anything else comes in the box. It did not come with one of those Novak or whatever, um, Nomex, whatever they are, the, the little black sleeve, the sock thing. Mine did not come with that. I believe it was just wrapped in a plastic package bag. It's no big frills. I really don't care. Packaging is not a huge deal to me. It's kind of cool. Can be kind of cool. Not a deal breaker. Not a huge deal to me. Um, and I don't think it came with one of those cigar wrappers, right? Most of my other dead air cans come with those. I'm not sure exactly why this one didn't come with it, but I don't have it here and I don't use it at all. So I didn't stick it anywhere. I don't know what happened to it, if it did come with it. But that's it. That's your hardware. Comes with the tools. Comes with the stuff you need to plug it into a standard, normal, whatever you want to call, pistol caliber carbine. That is threaded half by 28, all right? So that's that stuff. Let's look at, well, let's look at the can itself, basically, right? We already talked about the length of it, seven and a half inches. Um, I'm trying to think if there's another particularly large can like this that is a pistol can. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I know there's different pistol cans out there. Some are thinner, some are, are thinner. They're, they're smaller in diameter, right? Um, because going back to this guy's main purpose of what he is for, you got to think specifics. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on my little hobby horse here. Suppressors... If you get into suppressors and you're looking for the one can to do everything, you, you can find those cans, but in general, guys, gals, whatever, people, um, it's, it's a hard thing to find one can to do everything. You're going to find that it does some things better than other things, and it, it might do everything, but it's going to have its niche. I like how Dead Air uh, specifies. They, they build their, their suppressors for specific things. In general, they have some, you know... Like the Primal, it's kind of a, it's a big bore can, but it can do a whole bunch of other stuff. The same kind of thing, it's made for big bore stuff. This is a nine millimeter PCC can, right? Can you use this on an AR-15? You sure can. Can you use this on an AK? You betcha, right? Can you put this on a little um, threaded Glock 43? You can, right? Is it gonna be the best thing? Probably not, it's main focus is pistol caliber carbines, right? So keep that in mind. I keep harping on that because a lot of guys will try to get something to do everything and then forget, like, they'll put this on a pistol and they'll be like, wow, that's huge. Well, yeah, it's huge. It's not made for that. It works. It's not made for that. It's made for pistol caliber carbines, right? So keep that kind of stuff in mind. Um, again, we kind of talked about the modularity of it. You have the front end, which has, what, one, two, three, four, I think five baffles, so five extended, or extended. You got five extra baffles in there. Not really extra, depending on how you look at it. But you can shorten this guy down substantially. I mean, you can look at that. that that's a big difference between this, right, and this. That's That makes a difference. And honest, honest to goodness, personal use, like, yes, the longer can is going to sound better in general. But this shorter can, since it is one, what was it, 1.6, what was it, 1.618 inches in diameter, it's a fat can. It has a lot of volume in it. I know that there's some... I know that that can be misconstrued. I mean, it's not just about volume. It's not just about that. But I can tell you a fat can, in my experience, the, fat, the fatter cans that I have sound better than the skinnier, thinner cans, if that makes any sense. So science or no science, my personal experience in my ears, this sounds better than, let's say, the Omega 9K, right? There's that discussion right there. That's a whole video and everything. But the Omega 9K is short, simple, sweet, non-modular, non-anything, right? It just does what it does. The Wolfman is bigger, fatter, and more modular, and can do more things, and it does sound better, but it is larger than the Omega 9K. So keep that kind of stuff in mind. Keep that kind of stuff in mind. Um, if you're wanting to go for ultra quiet stuff, then you want the full length configuration. Um, speaking more to, well, let's go ahead and take this thing off, um, to modularity. We talked about the wipe. Let's just jump into that. I'm not going to get super, super technical, because there's so much to these things, and this is kind of a 30,000 foot view, whatever. I heard somebody say that one time, and it sounded cool. Um, so I thought I'd use it now, but this is, uh, I'm not going to get super get in the weeds on all this kind of stuff, but these end caps, the end cap that comes with, I don't remember if the ghost comes with this one or not, but this is the same thread, right? The, the same threading. You can put Sandman series. I think that's a different, I think they call it something else, but the Sandman, the Nomad, um, those all use the same, even the primal, they use the same end cap Okay, and the Wolfman uses the same end cap as well. So you could take a 5.56 end cap and put it on here, right? Put it on the suppressor if you're going to be shooting it on a 5.56, five, 
remember that so that you can take that off and not blow it up with shooting a nine millimeter or something through it, right? But this particular one that they make for the Wolfman is a little bit different, right? On the inside here, and I should've got my tool, it's got a socket looking hoochie pucker on it, right? And if you use a half inch socket, you can unscrew this internal piece out. You take this out, you take your wipe, which is basically a piece of rubber that hopefully you can see this. It's got a puncture or a slice in the middle of it. Um, and you take this rubber piece, you press it inside the front cap, you take that that piece you you screwed out, you unscrewed, and you and you you put, you put your rubber in, and you take that piece you screwed out, and you screw it back in, and it basically squishes this rubber piece and pushes it up to the front inside. It pancakes, it pancakes basically, it pancakes it in here. And what that does does a couple different things. It's a wipe, which a wipe basically does exactly what it says. It wipes when the bullet comes down the suppressor. This basically, this rubber piece basically makes a seal at the end of the suppressor, right? It's locked in there in that front cap. It makes a seal so that whenever the bullet comes out, the bullet actually makes contact with the wipe, right? And it, like I said, it seals as much gas inside the can as possible, right? Instead of letting a whole bunch of extra gas out, that open end right there, it basically blocks everything off and seals everything off. It does touch the bullet, so you're gonna have some downsides there, right? What happens if you touch the bullet right when it exits the gun? Mm -hmm. You get variations, right? Especially if this is a rubber piece that as you shoot it, you knock pieces of it out. It's it's rubber, it's going to break, it's gonna break down. You're gonna punch a hole in it, okay? So this isn't gonna last very long, maybe 50 rounds or so. Not gonna last terribly long. And it is gonna touch the bullet. And so your, your accuracy, right, it's, it's gonna go away, right? There's no getting around that, but you're gonna have a quieter can because it holds those pressures and gases in the suppressor a little bit longer, allowing them to cool down and allowing them to diffuse a little bit better before they exit, right? Another con, or it is a con, it's, 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 a, it's a variation, it's a, it's a consequence, there you go. Not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to know about it. Um, if you use the wipe, you're going to end up pushing that gas back into your gun even more, right? The suppressor makes your gun run dirty because it holds that pressure, right? And gases are lazy, basically, and they're gonna look for a pathway of least resistance. They're trying to get out the barrel, or the barrel, they're trying to get out the front of the suppressor, but the way the suppressor works is it's trying to stop that from happening. So a lot of gases are gonna come back down the barrel, right? So a suppressor itself is gonna run dirty. It's gonna make your gun dirtier. It's gonna throw more stuff back in the action. But if you wipe it and you put and you basically seal the can off, you're just compounding that times whatever and pushing even more stuff back into your gun. So there's a trade-off. Yes, it will be quieter, but it's gonna be dirtier, right? You're gonna lose some accuracy, but it's gonna be quiet. So it's it's some give and take, you know, it, it all depends on what you want to do. And the beautiful thing about it is they give you one and you don't have to run it. You just don't have to run it. If you don't want to run it, don't run it. I've run it before and it sounds cool and it's fun, but in general, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not even gonna run it. I just leave this guy sitting in a box. I don't really use it. But if you want to, the option's are there and that's cool. That's cool that the option's are there, all right? So that's the front cap and we, I mean, we already said you can put the different end caps on here. If you're running 30 caliber, right? If you're running this on a 300 blackout, put a 30 caliber end cap on it, right? Um, 556, same thing, put a 556 end cap on it. Um, when I say 30 caliber, you gotta keep in mind, it's not just 30 caliber across the board. This is not rated for like 308 Magnum or any of those bigger stuff, whatever. This is rated for, I think the highest one they have on here is 7.62 by 39. So you can put this on an AK, which that is a 30 caliber projectile, right? but the pressures are not the same as like a 308. So keep that in mind. So when I say 30 caliber, don't just think 30 caliber across the board, okay? But if you're using 30 caliber, like 300 blackout specifically, or 7.62 by 39, you could put a 30 caliber end cap on here and it's gonna make it sound a little better. Another thing you could do, and I don't have one sitting out right now, you can run the e-brakes. I do have one. You can run an e-brake if, if you are running those rifle calibers, right? The uh, 5.56, five, or 30 caliber. These e-brakes are not bored out for nine millimeter. You might be able to shoot, if, if you have everything perfectly aligned and you fire nine millimeter through here, it might be okay. 
it is not recommended and you are you are not guaranteed that you're probably going to get a baffle strike you're probably going to clip the inside of your e-brake because that hole right there on the inside that is not a nine millimeter if that's not made for nine millimeter you might be able to fit one through there it's not made for it though so if you're going to run nine millimeter don't use the e-brake but you have that option to use any of your front cap accessories that come on the sandman series nomad series you have that option to run that if you're running 556 or the appropriate 30 caliber stuff. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. Um, so it's kind of cool. It, it really, it's, this is a very modular suppressor from them. A lot of their other cans, like the Sandman that I'm holding, they're not super modular. You can do some things to them, but you can't do as much to it as this can. This might potentially be their most modular can. I'm not exactly sure. I never thought about that, but it might be. Um, so that's the front end of the gun, or the gun, of the uh, suppressor front end. The back end is also interesting, right? So you can do most of those things I talked about up front with Sandman and Nomad Series. Back end of the gun, you can do it with the Nomad Series. Sandman Series is all welded up and everything. But the back end, remember we talked about this comes with a half a 28 direct thread because it's made for PCCs, pistol caliber carbines. But they know that you are probably going to want to do different things and shoot it on a pistol, shoot it on a rifle and stuff and things, want QDs and stuff. So what they did is, we'll use our tools here, try to do it relatively quickly for you. Um, what they did is they, they made this a little bit different. This is not the industry standard 1 in 3 8 by 24 thread pattern. They didn't do that. I'm not sure if that wasn't the standard at the time. Like, that would be cool. That would have been cool, and I wonder if hindsight, if they'd have gone back and, and, and changed that at all, um, to have made it that thread pitch. I'm not sure. I really don't know. But they didn't do that. So now they have a whole new line of mounts that you can use, um, depending on what you're trying to do, with specifically the Wolfman and the Ghost. They use the same they use the same mounts. They're cross compatible as far as that goes. Um, don't take don't yeah don't take that to the bank. I'm not I don't remember if I've ever tried to put a chemo on a ghost. But the pistol the the, the booster assembly and the tri lug um, and the direct thread they're both cross compatible. They'll be perfectly fine. So we already talked about the direct thread. Um, the chemo the key micro. This is not the chemo the key micro. So it's a smaller. If you notice this is a smaller diameter thread right. This guy just screws right in. You can use your provided. Um, wrenches to tighten everything down. I'm just gonna get it nice and snug. Um, and this is the micro, so it is smaller. And a couple things you gotta note if you're gonna use this setup, right? Let's say you're gonna use an AK. Here you go. Here's your 30 caliber. Now, if you use the key micro, you have to use a shortened or a well key micro mount, okay? And basically what this is right here is this is a standard uh, break, a, a, a standard um, chemo break that I cut off the last baffle. There are chamber. There are three chambers in a standard uh, break. And I cut the last one off so that it fits. A standard full length break and a standard full length flash hider from Dead Air, they will not work with the Wolfman. They're too long. Okay, the the front of the of the muzzle device will contact the first baffle, and if you somehow get it to ratchet down, you're damaging something, you're breaking something. So do not do that. Okay. Nowadays they make several different they they make, they make multiple um, shorter versions of the of the chemo mount. Um, so it is what it is. You, you can buy a bunch of different. There's a bunch of different options, but they, what they want you to do is to run a break. Okay, um, not a flash hider, right? Because specifically, remember we talked about the construction of this guy. He is made of stainless steel, right? Not stellite, right? This is not really good for those extra pressures and that sandblasting effect of the shorter barreled, you know, rifles and stuff that those have on suppressors. So they want you to run a break and it kind of helps save the suppressor a little bit. Does that make sense? So this guy will fit on here. Let's just put it on for kicks and giggles. And get it to there we go, line up. So that's how this guy will look on there. And again, you could always take the end off. And if you put on, well, here you go. Yeah, look at that. Look at there. You can stick on that little e brake. That would be a nice little setup. That would, it's actually pretty stinking, yeah, relatively quiet for what it is. Um, when you run it on these setups, this is a particularly loud, it's a short barrel kind of gun. If you run this thing on a 16 inch gun or whatever, it's going to sound good. It sounds pretty decent. It really, really does. Especially if you use appropriate 
sized end caps and or an e-brake that that makes a difference all right but that's something to watch for the size of your muzzle attachments and if you're going to run rifle caliber stuff through it you need you need a brake you should use a brake that's what they recommend you do um so you should do that so an example of something that would not work is here's my ak right and this has a sense of liberty gunworks knox right so this is a flash hider slash comp right it will not work because if you go to stick this guy on right that is the right one yep you go to stick this guy on he doesn't go back far enough to ratchet he won't even he won't even go on enough to ratchet close because this is too long the muzzle device is way too long so thankfully it's not like it's such a close fit that you're going to accidentally put this um on a a muzzle device that's too big thankfully it's big enough that it's just not going to work so if it's not working double check your, your your mount and uh yeah don't force things if you force stuff you're going to break it and that's not fun but that's that that's the uh that's the chemo mount or the key micro keep saying it wrong the key micro mount now let's talk about pistol stuff so this is a pistol caliber carbine suppressor if you were to want to run this on let's say a pistol you would get, you're going to need to get the, get this stuff out of the way, the booster assembly, right? This is the booster assembly that they have. Now, it's made of three different pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here so I can kind of torque on it a little bit. You have this rear cap that basically holds the piston in. Get this guy out. Actually, it's made of more than three pieces. You got this rear cap. It has a rubber little gasket thing in there. Make sure that doesn't wear out. And this is super nasty dirty, so I'm gonna use a paper towel. You have your piston, and the uh, spring is wrapped around a piston, right? And then you have the housing. So this is the piece that goes in the suppressor, okay? So you have your housing right here. Here we go. Your housing, right? Your, it's super dirty. Your piston and spring, right? Spring is on the outside of the piston. Um, those do come apart. I'm just trying not to touch everything right now. And then you have this piece that goes on the end and holds everything together. So if you had it all taken apart and you were going to assemble everything, I'll show you how to do that. Before I do that, I'm going to mention real quick, when you get the piston, it's not, unless it's some special deal, it's not going to come with a, uh, with a, no, see, I just said it wrong. I said it wrong. When you get the booster assembly, it's not going to come with a piston, all right? The piston is going to be specific it's specific between two things. The pistol you're using, so the thread pitch, whether that's half by 28, five eighths, five eighths by 24, I think 1911 is like 11 16 by something, I don't remember. I get them all mixed up, but I know the standard ones are half by 28, that's nine millimeter, five eighths by 24. Um, that can be five eighths by 24, who uses that? I think, I think 40, maybe 45, I don't remember, I don't remember. You need to know your gun right? Know what thread pitch you need, right? For the piston. And then also the piston is made specifically for the booster, right? There are many companies out there that will make a, a piston, this piece, right? That can work on multiple suppressors, okay? If you want to just play it safe, get the piston from Dead Air that specifically says it's for the Wolfman and Ghost. The Wolfman and Ghost use the same piston. They use the same booster assembly. Just be very careful about that, okay? Um, for me personally, I like to use the Griffin Armament cam lock system. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but when you do that, you need to make sure that you have the correct piston. Because even the cam lock system, there's different pistons for different manufacturers, right? So I got the one that works with the Dead Air Ghost and Wolfman, that booster, right? So I hope that makes sense. If you're confused about that, ask me down below and I will try to explain it better. Or maybe somebody else will jump in here and explain it better for you. But it's really not that hard, but you need to do a little research. If you just go out there and be like, I need a booster and a piston. I'll just go buy two of them. Likelihood of them matching, probably not going to match. You got to look specifically and make sure that it works properly. Okay? So anyway, we'll put this booster back in here and I'll show you what it looks like on a pistol. Kind of screw this guy down a little bit. This is the housing. Go ahead and tighten him down just a smidge. We'll take our piston with the spring around it. You see the spring is around it? Yeah. We'll kind of place that guy down inside. All right, wipe my fingers off. Then we'll take this end cap piece here and it's basically gonna hold everything together, right? Make sure you do not cross thread anything. Nice and gently, get it rolling. Once it gets rolling, you just get it nice and hand tight. Wipe off any of that excess nasty garbage that came off because 
I always clean my suppressors, not really. And there you go, that guy's on pretty well. You could get in here and really snug it down with these wrenches, but I'm not shooting it right now, so I'm not gonna worry about that. But to put it on like a pistol, since we were talking about that, here is a, all right, here is, a, this is a kind of a goofy, expl or not explanation, a goofy example. This is a Finn Glock 48, and it has the cam lock system on the front, and this guy just goes on just like that. So yes, this is goofy, because this is a huge big suppressor on a thin framed little Glock, right? But I do have to tell you, it sounds good. It does sound good. And if you wanted to be a little bit smaller, then you could take that front part off. But if you see, this is a fat can, right? See how fat this can is compared to everything else? You are not gonna be able to see your sights, right? Even these are lower one-third co-witness sights. They don't even go above, um, they, they don't go above the suppressor. So you're not gonna get a clean sight that way. With a red dot, yeah, I can see over, right over the top with the red dot. That's about it, all right? So keep those things in mind. This thing will work on a pistol, but it's not necessarily made for a pistol. It's pistol caliber carbine, all right? Speaking, speaking of carbines, let's go ahead and get into that. The, the main kind of focus of what they wanted this suppressor to do. Since it's a pistol caliber carbine, many, many, many pistol caliber carbines have a tri-lug, right? Many of them do. Not all of them do, but many of them do. Um, so it would have been kind of cool if they'd have provided, since it's for that, if they'd provided the uh, the tri-lug, the, the, yeah, the tri-lug, but they didn't, and that's okay. It's just extra cost that you would have had to pay, and you end up paying it later because you end up buying one. But that goes in just like everything else, nice and, just screws right in, tighten it down nice and snug, um, and to kind of give you a image of what it looks like, here is the MP5, and this guy just snugs right on there, locks right in. So it looks pretty much like that, okay? A little bit big, again, we'll kind of get an eyeball view of it. If you take it in the K short configuration, it's actually not bad. In that short configuration, it's not bad at all. And it is quiet, it is, I will say that, it is nice and sneaking quiet. That's on an MP5. If you wanted to run it, here's a, here's a nine millimeter, Here's a nine mil, yeah, seven and a half inch, nine millimeter. I think this guy fits, yeah. Fits right on there just like that. So again, that's in the short configuration. Throw this guy on. And now he's in a long configuration. So yes, it's gonna be larger. More volume, should sound better. There is a point of diminishing returns when you talk about this stuff. You could make a suppressor that's five feet long and it's gonna have so much back pressure you're gonna beat your gun to death, right? Instead of that gas and stuff coming out the end of the barrel, it's gonna push it all back out the ejection port. So when we go shoot these things, you'll probably notice that there's more stuff coming out of here whenever you add a suppressor. That's just general across the board. There's really not a good way to get around that. All right, so without further ado, I think that's the main like specs and the, the accessories that you have with these guys. Um, that's the main stuff. I don't even know if I have, well, I could, I could direct thread this onto an MP5. But other than that, I don't think I have anything that's direct thread because most of my stuff has some kind of a QD mount or a tri-lug or whatever, some kind of thing. But it comes with that half a 28 just direct thread, okay? Um, so those are, those are the different configurations that this guy can be put in or made to fit. Um, so let's go ahead, go to the range, let's check this guy out on different hosts, see what it sounds like, and just kind of get a, get, a, get a sound visual view of it. Whatever, let's go to the range.
All right, guys, so that is it. That's my thoughts on the on the Dead Air Wolfman. I think for a pistol caliber carbine, it is beautiful. It does very good. For a 300 blackout, it actually does very, very good. Um, this guy's particular niche, and we've said it about 10,000 times, and I'll try to make this the last one. On 9mm, that's that's this guy's king. On a on, Not on a pistol, right? It works. Sounds good. Um, it's just bigger, obstructs your sight picture, all that kind of stuff. But for the for the carbines, right? That's where this guy shines. That's that's his niche. Can you use it on all these other things like pistols, AR-15s, AKs? Yes, you can, and yes, it can sound good. But if you're talking about buying a suppressor for a specific purpose, I'm not going to say it again. You know what this guy's specific purpose is, okay? So get it for that. And if you want to use it for those other things, you can use it for those other things. Just remember that. That's not its wheelhouse. So if it doesn't perform like you want it to, that's probably because you're using a 9mm pistol can or carbine can on a 5.56, right? Get something like the Sandman or the, or the Sierra or something else like that for, specifically for 5.56 if you're trying to do that. See what I'm saying? All right, so if any of you guys have any questions, please do ask. I love to help people find the suppressor that they want, the suppressor that's going to fit their needs. Because like I just said, not every suppressor is good for everything. And there is no one suppressor that works for everything. Or that works well for everything. Right? There's, this, this just doesn't exist. It just doesn't work. Right? So I love trying to help people find their fit. What they need, what they need for. So if you're considering a Wolfman, I would love to help you out if you got any questions. And if you have a Wolfman, I would love to hear your experience with these things. Right? Um, quick little thing. Whenever I first got this in, this is the major, this is the the, the biggest con of this whole thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, con, yeah. When I first got this, right, I waited all the time. I don't remember exactly how long the tack stamp looked, but I got the tack stamp back, brought this guy home, went to go mount it. It looked funky. I put it on a glass table and rolled it, and it was bowed like a banana. It was, the welding was not done right. So that was my first major major boo-boo right with uh <laughs> with with suppressors and with dead air thankfully i didn't shoot it right i tried to put a a, a guide rod or not a guide rod a uh, an alignment rod and their alignment rod did not i mean it was smacking baffles i would have blown the end of the whole front portion of that can would have gone off if i'd have tried to shoot it thankfully dead air was very easy to deal with i got it sent off and they sent it back i think it took them what two weeks or something like that um Totally hooked me up. They helped me out a lot. Now, should that have gotten past QC? No. That should never have left the factory. Did it? Yes, it did. So, yeah, that is what it is. But they stood behind their product. They got rid of that. They were able to fix this guy up. Same serial number. Didn't have to go through a whole other weight process. I shipped it off to them. They shipped it straight back to me. It was pretty stinking easy. So maybe some of you have some experiences like that. I'd love to hear that kind of stuff. I'd love to, to pick your brain about that stuff. All right? That's it. Y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, everything, and hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video. See you.